Welcome to NCARB exam practice test. Our topic today is project management. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. A construction manager will best be used by joining the team during which phase of a fast track project? A. Bidding. B. Schematic design. C. Construction documents. D. Construction administration. The correct answer is B. Schematic Design. Explanation. The architect's handbook of professional practice identifies that an owner will gain the greatest advantage from a construction manager by including them during the schematic design phase and for the remainder of the project. This will provide continuity to the project in terms of a project design, budget, and schedule. A construction manager adds technical and cost estimating advice, so their joining the team early increases their value to the project and reduces risks associated with a fast track project. The other three phases all typically occur after the design has been set. Number 2. The audio visual consultant is installing the wiring and equipment for the office intranet and notices conflicts with the HVAC ductwork. According to AI a document C401, what should the audiovisual consultant do? A. Notify the architect only. B. Notify the mechanical consultant only. C. Notify both the architect and mechanical consultant. D. Work around the ducts to complete the work. The correct answer is A. Notify the architect only. Explanation. According to AI a document C401, 2017, a consultant is not responsible for errors on the part of other consultants, but if they become aware of any conflicts they should promptly notify the architect. Number 3. According to AI a document A201, which of the following activities is the contractor responsible for? A. Preparing the final change order. B. Preparing the certificate of final payment. C. Issuing the certificate of occupancy. D. Compiling a comprehensive punch list. The correct answer is D. Compiling a comprehensive punch list. Explanation. According to AI a document A201, 2017, the contractor is responsible for compiling a punch list, providing notice of substantial completion, and providing notice of final completion. The architect is responsible for preparing any change orders and the certificate of final payment. The building department issues the certificate of occupancy. Number 4. Which member of the architecture team is responsible for obtaining phase sign-offs? A. The project manager. B. The director. C. The principal of the firm. D. The designer. The correct answer is A. The project manager. Number 5. During the construction phase, the owner requests changes that will require 10 additional footings. The contractor has supplied the following cost information. Size of each footing, 4.5 feet, multiplied by 4.5 feet, multiplied by 36 feet. Crew labor cost, $175 per cubic yard. Material cost including reinforcing, $225 per cubic yard. Miscellaneous equipment cost, $3 per cubic yard. Contractors overhead and profit, 10%. The construction budget is $10 million, and the current construction cost is $9,900,000. How much over budget will this requested change place the project? Round to the nearest whole dollar. A 16,691. B. 18,257. C. 19,519. D. 19,691. The correct answer is D. 19,691. Explanation. The requested modification by the owner will increase the current construction budget. The architect must first determine the total cost of the requested change. To do so, step 1, determine the total volume of the additional footings, 4.5 feet, multiplied by 4.5 feet, multiplied by 36 feet, all multiplied by 10 locations, equals 7,290 cubic feet or 270 cubic yards. 
Step 2. Determine the total cost of the footings, including labor, materials, and miscellaneous equipment costs. The sum of $175, $225, and $3, multiplied by 270 cubic yards, equals $108,810. Step 3. The contractor's overhead and profit must all be included in the increased costs. $108,810 multiplied by 110% equals $119,691. Step 4. The total cost of the additional footings and the current construction cost must then be compared to the construction budget amount. Round to the nearest whole number as stated, $119,691 plus $9,900,000, then minus $10,000,000 equals $19,691. Number 6. What is dependency? A common scheduling tool that graphically depicts all the tasks needed to complete a project, the sequence in which tasks must occur, and each task's duration. B. The relationship between a task that must be completed before another can start. C. The maximum length of time a non-critical task can be delayed or extended before it causes a delay. D. A detailed project schedule, breaking the project down into its component tasks and assigning staff members and other resources to each task. The correct answer is B. The relationship between a task that must be completed before another can start. Number 7. During a peer review of design documents for the local university's new business school building, the reviewer notes conflicting code references for means of egress on the life safety sheet. The architect should design which of the following? A. The ICC and NFPA model building codes. B. The adopted state building code. C the adopted code of the local jurisdiction. D. Whichever adopted code is most stringent. The correct answer is D. Whichever adopted code is most stringent. Explanation. The Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice discusses how most jurisdictions across the United States have adopted building codes based on the ICC family of codes. At the same time, both states and local jurisdictions have the authority to make changes to portions of the building codes. As the architect, you have a legal duty to design in compliance with all the codes that govern the type and location of the project. Researching the jurisdictions and requirements for a specific project is the responsibility of the architect. When multiple codes conflict, the most stringent code always takes precedence. Number 8. During the review of bid documents for a renovation project, the architect notices that several details are missing information due to concealed building conditions. The full scope of this work cannot be identified until demolition work is in progress. To control project costs and limit cost increases during construction, which strategies should the architect choose as part of the bid documents? A. Contingencies. B. Change orders. C. Unit prices. D. Addenda. The correct answer is C. Unit prices. Explanation. Often on renovation projects there are unknown elements or quantities until demolition occurs. Strategies to minimize this risk should be discussed with the owner and incorporated into the documents. Unit prices establish a cost for performing additional work by the contractor when encountering unknown conditions. Bid alternatives define a change in cost for scope or quality of materials during the bidding process. This provides the owner options to reduce the overall construction costs as necessary in order to maintain the project budget. Contingencies should be a part of a project budget and cost estimate, but are not a strategy for controlling costs. Change orders are issued during construction to identify changes in the contract, but are also not an effective cost control. Addenda modify the bid documents during the bid phase, but do not control costs. Supplemental instructions are modifications to the general conditions of a contract and typically have a limited impact on costs. Number 9. At the end of the design development phase for an office park, the owner reports that a major tenant had backed out of the project. The owner delays the project two months to find a new tenant or secure additional funding. Working under AI a document B101, which of the following should the architect do during the two-month project suspension? A. Request payment for design development. B. Request two-month advance fee for construction documents. C. Prepare final bid package before ceasing work. D. Assist the owner in lining up a new tenant.
The correct answer is a request payment for design development. Explanation. According to AI a document B101, 2017, if the owner suspends a project, the architect is entitled to payment for all expenses incurred up to that point. The architect can also request payment for expenses incurred because of the interruption. And, if the project resumes, a revised schedule can be submitted. When an owner suspends a project, the architect should suspend work on the project, so requesting an advance or completing other work is unwise for the architect. While assisting the owner in lining up a tenant may get the project back on track, it is beyond the scope of a standard owner and architect relationship and is not the role of the architect. Number 10. An owner has purchased a 50,000 square feet parcel of undeveloped land located near an older neighborhood undergoing revitalization. The owner wants to develop the land into a five-home subdivision. Working under AI a document B101, what steps should the architect take once the owner supplies an initial budget amount for the project? A. Analyze the budget against Uniformat for design cost management. B. Negotiate a higher budget for risk mitigation. C. Evaluate the budget against the program. D. Begin development of design documents based on the budget. The correct answer is C. Evaluate the budget against the program. Explanation. According to AI a document B101, 2017, the architect should always evaluate a budget amount with respect to the stated program, anticipated schedule, and market conditions. The architect should not begin the development of design documents without first understanding the budget amount and its impact. Negotiating a higher budget as a risk mitigation technique is not a wise strategy and may jeopardize the project. Uniformat is a classification system used for estimating construction costs and does not apply to project budgeting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.